<coughs> um, y'all, excuse me, but like, Okay, um, just, just, <laughs> I don't smoke weed at all. No, oh. oh. <laughs> oh, man, um, <laughs> you know what, let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's let's run it back. Let's run it back. <laughs> oh, let's run it back. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your boy. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> the one and only A Switch, aka <coughs> who keep putting this damn water in my wrong pipe, <laughs> aka um, I, I, I seriously uh, do not smoke weed like that. <coughs> AKA uh, lungs, lungs on, uh, lungs going through it right now. <laughs> AKA Dokomaki uh, Tiger Dropper. AKA the undefe undefeated, undisputed, under uncontested social distancing champion. <laughs> AKA um, I might need some resuscitation right now. <sighs> Bringing you <laughs> that threw me off so hard. <laughs> Bringing you yet another episode of Switches Sites, episode 111. 111. You know what that means. I can make a wish, half a wish, I think, because it's not four ones, it's just three ones. But for those that don't know, <laughs> Switches Sites podcast is a uh, solo gaming podcast where I talk about just that. <laughs> oh god! <clears throat> oh. Uh, today's date: <laughs> Happy July, <laughs> July first. Uh, we bring it in strong, baby. We bring it in with them live bloopers. <laughs> you know what? I'm leaving it in. I'm leaving it in. I don't even care. Um, you know what? Hey. I'm, I'm, tr I'm a show, uh, you know, people that, um, this production, uh, style, um, is not all, you know, sunshine and rainbows, cupcakes and unicorns, you know, sometime, <laughs> sometimes right when you fucking go live, <laughs> you, you, uh, <laughs> You drink some water to go down uh, the completely wrong pipe. And then you just have like a five minute coffin fit. <coughs> oh, that's still going, uh, obviously. So, uh, <laughs> oh man, that really derailed me. I'm sorry. That was that. It was just the, just the time. And it just was perfect. <laughs> it couldn't have been before I went live. Couldn't have been after. I mean, hell, I'd take even in between, but no, right, <laughs> right before I went live. 
Oh, man. Oh, y'all, excuse me. <coughs> hmm. Okay, well, lesson learned. Uh, maybe I should <laughs> stop drinking water before I start the podcast. That might that might be a be a lesson I might need to need to take. I mean, but you gotta drink water. You gotta be hydrated either way. You got <coughs> you gotta you gotta be hydrated. You know. Um. So. <coughs> okay. Uh, either way, <laughs> cough and fits aside, um, pretty interesting show for you today. Uh, going to talk about some very, uh, juicy deets with some of these, uh, ongoing rumors, uh, gaining more traction. So, um, Ooh, I was almost about to forget my time codes. <coughs> I'm gonna let this let almost let the cough and fit get the, get the ultimate best of me, but I will prevail. Um, (laughs) Hey, hey, we still going to keep going. I don't care. I don't even care. Um, Yeah. So without further ado, cough and fits aside, let's stop the dilly dallying and get right into it. Um, First topic of discussion. um, Konami. Konami. I know we talked about it last episode about the Silent Hill rumors, maybe a couple episodes ago. Um, seems to yet again gain some more traction, uh, specifically with um, Konami and Blooper Team. I believe they're the uh, people. Let me get that, <laughs> that coffin made me sweat. <laughs> It was, I was fighting some demons. Um, the Konami and the blooper team, um, have announced a, a quote unquote strategic partnership deal. Um, at least quote unquote, as a part of the agreement, the partners declare cooperation and development of contents in exchange for know-how. So for a blooper team in terms of their previous work, I believe they worked on silent nuts. <laughs> why I, want, I had it in my head, obviously, um, the Blair, Witch game, and I think recently the medium, which was at least <clears throat> it, uh, premiered exclusively for the Xbox, uh, family or no, I think it's exclusive to series X. Um, and later I think, or is going to come out soon on PS five now, but Uh, At least that's generally their most recognized work or if any, their work, uh, currently. Um, so, you know, that's, uh, I mean, of course the obvious association with, uh, them and Konami, uh, is definitely clearly silent Hills. Um, at least according to VGC, uh, sources specifically, one of the projects that blooper team and Konami agreed on is, actually is silent hill related. So this could be a multitude of things, but VGC did also, uh, emphasize that, uh, there is actually still another silent hill project that ha- also has been outsourced, uh, to a prominent Japanese developer. So, <coughs> um, it, this could mean that, um, maybe either I would assume because this is not necessarily a, what do I say? Like established developer more or less, but, um, you know, I I think the games are solid. I believe the medium reviewed. Okay. I think there's like people on different parties regarding it. I've not played it myself, but so, uh, I mean, uh, I think generally uh, the consensus is that a lot of people are kind of, uh, understandably so, uh, uneasy about what this would mean. Um, <clears throat> but considering that silent Hill, um, that there is another title, uh, at least for me, it helps kind of alleviate some of the, you know, concern, at least that <laughs> I guess at worst case scenario, this game blooper teams, silent Hill game is horrible. 
<laughs> and maybe the um this um the the next this other silent hill that's supposedly in development may uh you know redeem redeem it if worst case scenario i mean uh worse or case scenario both of these games are horrible and the the silent hill the silent hill legacy is yet again tarnished uh, i guess um not if if we're considering the um the other silent hill games that came out after i believe what is known as like the is it the legendary four the legendary four silent hill titles well what were the titles that were all originally made by um team silent um i think pretty much all the other silent hills after that were uh, at least it seems like the consensus was generally like mediocre too bad <clears throat> i've not heard or am aware of a a silent hill after team silent that was really good um but who knows maybe maybe a blooper team can change history and hopefully if 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 hopefully uh if blooper team fails which i hope doesn't happen um the, this supposed japanese developer working on yet uh additional silent hill project will be able to redeem it so <clears throat> here's to hoping um but i mean hey at least it's good to i mean <laughs> not from konami themselves of course but get uh some very likely confirmation that um this is actually a thing that is legit and that will happen so um, yeah, Konami just can't ignore such an iconic IP that is Silent Hill. Um, it just, I, I personally can't see it. I really can't, but, um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, I'm trying to think if there would be any. Mm, no, I just, you, you, if you're Konami, you definitely at the very least need to do what they're doing right now, which is at least according to these rumors, sources, um, keep this Silent Hill train going. <laughs> chee chee. <laughs> I'm gonna keep doing it. I'm gonna keep doing it. Um, yeah. So <sighs> cool to get somewhat additional confirmation, but. Uh, it would definitely be <clears throat> good to see what blooper team has. Um, and you know, that's going to definitely give us the biggest indication of, uh, uh, what potentially will be of whatever this is <laughs> once we find out, <clears throat> but silent Hill has, it ha will be coming back. Um, in my, what was, what was the famous quote? In my, in my silent dreams, I, nope. Damn it. What was it? What did Maria say in Silent Hill 2? Fuck. Uh, in my distant dreams, I see that. Oh, it's going to kill me. Uh, Maria. Um, Silent Hill. Okay, there it is. I remembered. In my restless dreams, I see that town. Silent Hill. I don't, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry if that was anticlimactic, but at least in my head, it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was, <laughs> it was a struggle. So um, I'm gonna give myself flowers. Nobody else is gonna give me flowers, but I'm gonna give myself flowers for that. Moving on. <clears throat> oh man, this. <laughs> This is a horrible way to start off. Oh my God. I'm, I'm still reeling. Um, <coughs> let me, let me get my, get my notes, get, get my notes. Um, new dead space, uh, which we, I'm pretty sure we talked last episode about yet again, keeping that rumor 
traction train going. Choo choo. Oh my god. All right, yo. My mixer just gave up on me, man. I, uh, all right, I guess that is. <laughs> um, so I know we pretty much speculated. <laughs> we put we put the put the tin foil hats on <laughs> real quick. <laughs> we were talking about it uh last episode about you know where where this rumored Dead Space game uh would be whether it would be a sequel or a remake, um but. Looks like, according to Jeff Grubb, that man himself, um, it seems like uh, the pointers, <clears throat> the the wheels have been turned towards a Dead Space remake. And supposedly it's going to be developed by uh, Motive. I feel like, I feel like any company under EA is, uh, uh, EA Motive seems to be rings a bell. I think it's EA motive, or maybe it's just a thing where EA just associates everything with, with, uh, their company. But in my head, I, I'm pretty sure it's EA motive. Either way, EA motive will be picking up, you know, the, uh, remains that, um, was it not volition, but, uh, what was the, what was the developer? It started, it's (coughs) with a V. Is with a V. I know it. 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 I want to say volit visceral, visceral. Of course, all these damn, <laughs> all these damn V's. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. Um, so to a uh, quote, uh, from an excerpt from VentureBeat.com, and in, in regards to this article specifically here. Ford's Dead Space game motive is taking notes from Capcom's recent Resident Evil remakes, which is actually pretty dope. Um, like Resident Evil 2 remake, expect the next Dead Space to use the original game as a strong foundation, but it should also have modern visuals and it will likely bring in new gameplay mechanics inspired by other entries in the franchise. And speaking of Capcom, it is likely a major reason a new dead space is happening while EA has let its horror franchise wither. The resident evil series is larger than ever and Capcom has provided an easy, easy blueprint for EA to follow. EA has likely also warmed back up to the idea of producing single player adventures after success, the success of star Wars Jedi fallen order. Publishers made statements in the recent past about shifting its focus to live service games, and that was part of a deliberate decision to invest less in what single player experiences following poor results from years and its calendars. So boy, the biggest takeaway I took from that, we want to make our remake like Resident Evil 2 remake. And I would say uh you are in definitely the right track if that's what you're your, uh, I don't know your, uh, your thermometer, your barometer is at, um, because you can't go wrong with that. I mean, uh, immaculate remake, uh, considering dead space in, I think even to this day, <clears throat> still being like terrifying as hell ugh, to think in a, you know, playing on PS five series X and lights off every single light off <sighs> HD. Gr- oh, oh, I'm, I'm peeing right now. <laughs> I'm peeing right now in fear. All right. Um, I'm just scared. I'm scared right now. I, I want to, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm this close to going in a fetal position right now. Just thinking about it, <laughs> but, um, uh, that, this is pretty cool. I, I think, Of course, uh, having a somewhat Capcom bias, at least specifically, of course, to Resident Evil, um, definitely is very, very, uh, what's the word encouraging to hear in terms of them, um, you know, at least taking some inspiration for Resident Evil 2 remake. So, um, Hey, 
I'm totally down for this. I mean, uh, at least what I was thinking before, not to retread what I talked about last episode, but, um, yeah, I think really a remake is definitely the best way to go about this IP considering, you know, it's a new, a new, uh, development company and not like the, the, you know, pre-existing one that, well, no longer existing one, but previous development of visceral to actually, you know, carry the mantle. Um, and I think this definitely just gives them the most flexibility to, you know, incorporate, uh, things maybe they find more interesting, uh, you know, more or less reinvent the wheel, but additionally, you know, give them the opportunity to make them, um, you know, make their creative juices flow without necessarily being too confined by, you know, the continuity of the previous games. Um, you know, so I'm all for it. Uh, day one, day one for me. I want to see some gameplay though, but of course, uh, day one for me. Uh, man, I think, I believe <clears throat> this potentially will be announced at, I think it's something this month, some EA event. Um, so, Hey, I want it. I want it. I mean, I don't want it, but I do at the same time. It's like <laughs> somebody hits you in the face, but you like, ah, but then you, <laughs> you get like a brief millisecond of maybe I like this. <laughs> uh, no, no, that's horrible. That's horrible. Uh, moving on. <laughs> um, let's talk about Kojima, the man himself. I'm back. That's, 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 his, that's, that's something he said. That's something he said. I'm back. It's like, Oh, oh shit. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> oh shit. Where'd you go? <laughs> I'm being stupid right now, but, um, so, uh, I know we, I think we touched on it. Uh, I believe last episode as well, uh, specifically regarding Hideo Kojima, and uh, the rumors of him working with Xbox for an exclusive uh, game, uh, specifically um, utilizing uh, Microsoft's Azure cloud uh, functionality that uh, at least was definitely like marketed a lot for Xbox games um, in terms of just, you know, Hey, this, we could do this if any developers want it. Like at least, you know, I'm pretty sure we touched on crackdown before, but, um, at least now it seems, uh, we get more credence. So supposedly uh, according to venture B, uh, Hideo Kojima and Microsoft has signed a letter of intent that states the two parties intend to work out the details on a publishing agreement for a new Xbox game. According to sources familiar with the matter, this is a key step in the negotiations between the Metal Gear Solid creator and Xbox company. This signifies that both parties have signed or no, have both parties have agreed to a generalized deal while lawyers continue hashing out the finer details. Uh, Microsoft and Kojima's teams have spent months discussing a possible partnership, and now it is more likely than ever that those conversations will bear fruit. The deal is so close. <laughs> I don't know how that made me laugh. <laughs> uh, that Microsoft has begun <laughs> preparing for what Kojima will need to make his new game. <laughs> the deal is so close. <laughs> Maybe just the way I, way I said it that made me laugh. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I was put, making, it, making it way more serious than it needed to be. <laughs> The deal is so close. Um, this is cool though. Um, man, it's, <clears throat> it's cool, but hard to fathom at the same time. I think it was kind of like, it was kind of like when Tekken, Tekken went multi-platform. Like I think when Tekken went to Xbox for the first time back in like, I think it was a 360 PS3 era. And it was like so weird to, <clears throat> 
play Tekken on an Xbox and, you know, have Tekken with like 360, you know, controller inputs. Like, what is this? Um, but Hey, you know what? I'm all for it. Uh, if, if I say it again, <clears throat> if anybody could make something in terms of concepts, uh, like that are unfathomable, at least that like, you know, us, <laughs> the general human race, uh, can think of, you know, how to make something, some factor engaging or fun or interesting. I mean, Hideo Kojima, he, he would, he would be the guy. I can't think of anybody else that would, uh, you know, that we haven't, that we aren't already aware of that could, you know, pull something like this off. But if, if there was, I'm pretty certain it would be Hideo Kojima. It would be. Um, so man, I'm just very curious as to what this would be, would or could be. So specifically utilizing cloud Xbox cloud. How would Hideo Kojima utilize? Yes. Yeah, like I can't even fathom what, what that would look like. You know, it's just, he just has that mindset of what he could, what he could do. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I know, man, it's, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but I mean, we all know it's there, but boy, is this going to reignite the uh, console war when it, when it, you know, comes to fruition, like a closely associated PlayStation IP. Well, I guess even though like Metal Gear, the later Metal Gears, at least specifically the last, technically, supposedly the last, well, not necessarily the last, but the, the latest resonate, um, not resonate, but metal gear, solid game where, uh, metal gear, whatever metal gear reboot, <laughs> rebootiance. <laughs> That's what I'll call it. <laughs> Cause I don't count it. Metal gear rebootiance. Uh, we don't, we don't acknowledge that one. Cause that just was, that was just a cash grab. But, um, for metal gear, solid five, of course, being coming to, uh, the Xbox one, as well as the PlayStation. And, and, um, I can't think of, I think, uh, ground zeros. I'm assuming that came with it as well, but I mean, it's a lot of potential there. Um, but, um, maybe as I'm thinking about it, it's not as, it's not as that pivotal, but I don't know. I feel like that would incite some, some flame wars when it comes to, you know, the console. Well, more, more so the console wars and flame wars, but and specifically like uh, Xbox sucks, suck, uh, uh, Xbox sucks. I hate it. Xbox sucks. So, um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. But hey, I'm all for it. I, I do kind of like uh, independent Kojima now. It feels like he could just totally, you know just do whatever he wants. And, you know, I, I feel like he's just loving doing that specifically. I mean, Death Stranding was uh, interesting, but I mean, it was okay. I mean, hopefully I might give directors cut another chance depending on how much they change. But, um, outside of that, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Hey, whatever, wherever Kojima goes, I'll go. Unless, I mean, <laughs> unless it's Death Stranding again, um, I don't, then I'm like, uh, ah, uh, I don't know, uh, man, my, my knee gave out, uh, Kojima, uh, man, um, oh, man, uh, just not feeling too good today, <laughs> not feeling too good today, so, yeah, but, <sighs> we'll see. We shall see. That's crazy though. I mean, man, just to think Xbox getting a Hideo Kojima. That's never thought I'd say those, those two in a sentence of relation, but here we are moving on. You already know. <laughs> I, I, you, you don't know, but you already know. <laughs> 
I'm, uh, I don't mean to get all deep, but you don't know, but you already know. Streets of Rage. I forgot that my uh, voice box. Yeah, I don't need it. Streets of Rage 4. DLC, Mr. X Nightmare. Got a release date. July 15th. Thank you. I didn't do nothing, but <laughs> this is just a celebration, but <sighs> y'all don't know. I'm going to try not to gush right now, but uh, I mean, I'm just saying from all the stuff I've been seeing, Dottie MU Gar Crush Games, um, <clears throat> Lizard Cube, just 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 giving giving me the biggest blue balls known to man i'm gonna be honest with y'all i'm gonna be transparent they showing all these combo videos they uh you know they got they got max he jumping off walls and doing slams <sighs> freaking freaking shiva he just he, he he can kick up weapons and and not and and uh, propel them towards people, but without even picking up the weapon because he's too cool to pick up weapons. <sighs> you got a stale. She she using her her move set from the game as a boss. She she can freaking throw grenades and incapacitate people and do do grab combos, tackle you to the ground and beat you up. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I was sick of all the teasing, all this teasing and no payoff, all this teasing and no release, <laughs> but have no fear that release will be soon. <laughs> I feel like I'm preaching right now. <laughs> I'm not okay. I just really love this game. All right. Well, at least specifically this DLC. I'm, I'm very hyped for it. But then, then on top of that, they freaking showed um, what you call it? They uh, they they we knew about like customizable combos and stuff and moves that you can add to characters and I guess uh earn. But then they uh, recently showed that for even the retro characters, they added additional move sets for them. It's like, uh, come on now. Come on now, guys. Uh, you can't keep doing this. And, you know, I complained enough and my prayers have been answered. And we um, we uh, we did <laughs> this morning actually get a release date. <sighs> it, it feels great. It feels great. The 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 period of. I don't even know what you call it, but um of just anxiety even I don't know I don't even know a better word to describe it just like I need it <laughs> I'm not an addict though but I mean I, I need it <laughs> that's literally an addict so <laughs> I don't need it though but I need it <laughs> literally an addict trying to convince you to not um to not uh <laughs> Uh, an addict trying to convince you they're not an addict. I don't need it, but I need it. <laughs> um, man. And then they they showed uh, the survival mode. <sighs> they they, oh my god, they showed a survival mode that looks like it has like straight up rogue like elements where like each you know in, encounter is totally different and random. So that's going to be fun. And then it's based on the perks you get. Ugh, I'm sorry. It's just this. How can you not? How can you not? I just. Ugh. Uh, $8, which is crazy, too. That's you getting a lot of stuff for $8. Three additional characters, new characters, uh, new move sets. Uh, what else? It was something else specifically. Let me, uh, 
What was it? It was Elemental Weapons, Curse Perks. Oh, new difficulty level. Uh, well, no, actually, this is a free update. So with the free update, that presumably is going to come when this uh, new DLC drops. New difficulty level, Mania Plus. <laughs> if Mania, if Mania wasn't hard for you, well, uh, hey, uh, for for I don't know how many of you who could just <coughs> play Mania without even thinking about it, but hey, you need more of a challenge than Mania. Mania Plus. Training mode with tutorials, which is that's the honestly the 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 hidden, um, the secret weapon. I'd say. That's definitely in the mode I would definitely be messing with. Um, if it, <laughs> if it's one thing about me, I'm gonna be in that training room because really my biggest uh learning uh like tool is repetition for me, and the biggest best way I can get at repetition, hey, I'm gonna keep doing the moves, you know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna build up that muscle memory. Uh, new color palettes if you want um. I don't know if you want a, you want, <laughs> you want a caramel max. Hey, we got you, bro. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if that's, an, I don't even know. You can, I, I think I saw some of the characters like were darker than others and stuff like that in terms of color palette swaps. So I would assume if you want mulatto, mulatto max, you can get mulatto max. Um, that's my dream. <laughs> that's my aspiration. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, Sign me up. Sign me up twice. You know what? Sign me up three times. <laughs> I'll be be uh be the you know keep coming up to the to the uh <laughs> a one in the streets of rage, Mister X Nightmare, please. In in different costumes, <laughs> slightly modified costumes. It's like, are you just? No, I'm not. I would just like Streets of Rage, Mister X DLC, please. Thank you. And I will be on my way. Um, so, <sighs> okay. I think I've got enough. I've got it on my system. Oh man, it's going to be so good. Mm. Mm. That's what the old, the, old, the, the noise old people. Mm. <laughs> okay. Let me stop. Uh, moving on. find where I was going. Okay. Gozo Tsushima is getting a director's cut. So it looks like those rumors were true about uh ghost ghost Tsushima DLC. Uh, but, but uh sucker punch was like, hold on, wait a minute. No, we got, <coughs> we got something better. And of course, just out of nowhere, they just announced Ghost of Tsushima director's cut. So a brief description of the game. Um, while director's cut players uh, on both PS4 and PS5 will be able to experience the Iki Island content, PlayStation Five, <laughs> PlayStation Five. PlayStation five players will have access to a few additional new features. Uh, we've heard your feedback about the lack of Japanese lip sync in the original version of ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> I'm just butchering ghost of Tsushima. And it's something we worked hard to address in the new release. Thanks to the PS five's ability to render cinematics in real time cutscenes of ghost of Tsushima and on Iki Island on PS five will now offer lip sync for Japanese voiceover. I definitely vividly recall that. I think that was a criticism I did have when um I talked about the game way back um was yeah that the lack of uh the Japanese lip syncing and that was super distracting uh for me at least cuz you know it's like Ghost of Tsushima you I, I was going to play this game uh with the Japanese voiceover but it's like the lip syncing was too distracting. So I did, uh, did go back to, uh, I just went to English instead, but you know, I doubt I will fully play this all over again. 
Um, but maybe I, for sure the Iki Island and whatever that place will entail, I'll definitely play that. But uh, I don't know if I'll <clears throat> replay the, the whole main game again. I'll probably maybe dabble and just, you know, just put... <laughs> Uh, lay my hands on the on the on the grass and flowers as I as I uh, as I gallop on horseback across the beautiful expanse of worlds and, and see the sights and and uh, you know take in take in the visual uh, fidelity of this immaculate world that is Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> I feel like I was in a jazz <laughs> in a jazz. Uh, what it, what what are they called? The jazz. I know there's some term for it. jazz session, jazz something where everybody snapping their fingers and put <laughs> a um <laughs> a biscuit syrup. Mm. Taste it, yummy. Two times. Cook it. Breakfast. <laughs> yeah, then they do this. I don't know. It's I know it exists. I know it exists. Either way, good stuff. Ghost of Tsushima director's cut. I feel like that's uh, this is the, what we got. Uh, what um, Death Stranding director's cut. Gonna get more info on that. And Ghost of Tsushima director's cut. Um, I'm gonna call it right now. There's gonna be some. Some category at uh the Game Awards best director's cut. <laughs> well, what this is this is definitely the, so far a year of the director's cut. Uh, last what last maybe not last year. Twenty nineteen was the year re- of the remaster. Now twenty twenty one year of the director's cut. Just watch. Just watch. Moving on. Keeping a uh, keeping that PlayStation uh, upgrade train going. Chee chee. <laughs> I don't know why I did the laugh. I don't know why I did the laugh at the end. I'm sorry. Um, Ratchet and Clank uh, announced that uh, they are releasing. I think they did release it a new patch that actually, um, interestingly enough, that's definitely why I included it is, uh, gonna have a 40 FPS fidelity mode. And I say that because that is totally unusual. Of course, when you think of, um, at least specifically console games, it's either 30 FPS or 60 FPS, or at least now with the new consoles and some rare cases, at least so far, 120 FPS. Um, <clears throat> which is something I did not know in terms of the reasoning, which now makes total sense after the fact. Uh, so the interesting thing about 40 FPS is that you, you, uh, you can only do it on a 120 Hertz display. And at least I was curious, like, why would you need that? But, uh, because 40 FPS uh, can be divided into 120 Hertz or the other way around. You know what I mean? Um, which in terms basically means that there won't be any screen tearing, which technically would be what would happen if you had this game run at 40 FPS on like a a 60 Hertz refresh rate, uh, display, um, which is something I totally did not know. And something I learned today is that, that, um, that's uh, pretty crazy that like, you know, we can, uh, up it up a little bit to avoid, um, you know, screen tearing. If it goes evenly into the max refresh rate of a display, which is pretty dope. Um, so <laughs> I made this joke. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> uh, um, so I guess you could say 40 is the new 30. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I see, I keep, I was going to go for the, the boo button, but it, 
I just, I keep forgetting I should make a boo button, but you know, it just, uh, just things keep coming up. <laughs> uh, all these dad jokes and I'm not a father though. I'm not a father. Um, so yeah, pretty fascinating. I have to say that's, that's pretty cool. So hopefully <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, 40 is definitely going to be the new 30 when it comes to at least the option, of course, you know, to accommodate people who don't have 120 Hertz to uh, display. But I thought that was something pretty insightful and interesting uh, for those that may not know that. I don't know if you're a tech enthusiast, semi tech enthusiast. I did not know that, but I do now know. So I pass the knowledge on to you, young one, go forth and <laughs> tell other people <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm, I, I mean. Do what you want to do, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Uh, moving on. Um, let's see. Kazuya, Kazuya Mishima. Let me try it. Kazuya Mishima. Ooh, I kind of like that. Um, Kazuya Mishima, uh, was of course announced for smash as the next smash character last, uh, last week or, you know, during E3. Uh, so we did now, uh, this past Monday, get a in-depth, um, presentation for Kazuya and his moveset and stuff. And boy, let me tell you, man, uh, I think he clearly has the most expansive move set in the game for sure. Um, I think he literally has like 80 damn moves. It seems like feels like at least, um, dude is crazy. <clears throat> I guess we'll go more into that. Um, uh, in terms of what I've been playing, but, uh, <laughs> uh, interesting, uh, you know, aspect of this, uh, afterward, or during the, the presentation, of course, um, you know, probably the bane of a lot, <laughs> a lot of smash fans existence, uh, when it comes to those, uh, juicy, stylish me costumes and boy, <laughs> we got some. So, uh, we got, uh, Dante, you know, uh, <laughs> Don, the Dante we didn't want. Um, you know, Dante looking really goofy and, and, uh, generic in his me costume. Uh, so, I mean, again, for people that may not know about, uh, smash, um, what, what am I thinking of smash new character, character announcement, uh, not necessarily establishment, but, uh, expectations, if you will, where basically the common, a uh, theme uh, that's been been pretty much consistent so far is that, or rule, I guess, un unwritten smash announcement rule uh, is that basically if a character is been announced as a me fighter uh, costume, uh, they're pretty much deconfirmed as being uh, the next smash character. So. Uh, with Dante being a me costume announced as a me costume, uh, pretty much deconfirmed as, as, uh, pretty much any possibility of being a smash character. I think they crushed the dreams of somebody else too. I believe, um, what is his name? I think Isaac from, uh, I'm, I'm pretty much getting it wrong. I think tales of Symphonia. It's, uh, tales from Symphonia character. I think he was highly requested, um, at least in a lot of, um, uh, like polls for the most requested character and stuff like that. I'm trying to get his name right. Lloyd. Yeah. Lloyd. <clears throat> so. Lloyd, of course, as well, was confirmed as a costume and uh, in turn, of course, deconfirmed as a character as well. Uh, Dragonborn, D a.k.a. Dovahkiin, uh from um, Skyrim. <laughs> I was like, 
I think nobody necessarily asked for it. But okay, I, I guess it makes sense because you know, uh, you got Volt Boy from Fallout as a, a me costume as well. So, um, I mean, technically it's cool. I mean, I guess I'd rather take this rather than like nothing at all. But you know, of course, um, it would have been Dante would have been cool. But you know, hey, <laughs> I bought it though. But I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's the closest thing we go get the same scenario with a Travis touchdown where he's uh yet again, you know, deconfirmed, but I mean, I want to at least represent him still, but you know, Hey, I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it before, but yeah, I'm very curious. I think everybody is who is going to be the last DLC character for smash ultimate who could it be it's uh, a lot of people are going to get disappointed one way or another i know that's for sure um but it was going to be very interesting to see who could it be who could it be who could it be um if anything it definitely narrows down the choices that's for sure so um yeah hey you know what i mean I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I talked about this before, before, but to, to, I think we all need to give Sakurai his flowers because this man did an immaculate feat of what <sighs> bringing technically what 80 characters from a lot of various IPs all together into one game. This is technically what Nintendo All Stars, PlayStation All Stars, <laughs> especially now with Kazuya. Um, yeah, I guess mainly, yeah, Nintendo PlayStation All Stars. But hey, I think these, they, for the most part, a lot of good choices were made so far. Um, you know, a lot of uh, some shoveled in ones that aren't necessarily as desirable but i mean of course you know you know you gotta appease some parties here and there which is totally fine so um yeah thank you either way sakurai thank you so much um moving on speaking of um <laughs> yeah <laughs> speaking of characters that have been uh, deconfirmed in Smash. Of course, uh, Travis Touchdown, who, um, at least in this case, uh, we're talking about for wonderful reason. Uh, Suda51, the man himself, uh, dropped a tweet Tuesday, this past Tuesday, uh, showing Travis touchdown and, you know, he's like, here's your daily dose of Travis. No more heroes three. Uh, but what does he have on a fuck racism hoodie? You love to see it. You really do. Um, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Definitely going to be wearing that, uh, for a very long time. Um, but it's good to see some, uh, some support terms of, you know, of course, the recent events and, and things like that to have, uh, some people on your corner, you know, um, as if I didn't love this dude enough, but it, uh, I mean, I love it even more. I mean, how can you not love it? And <laughs> man, it was some nonsense that was a uh, spat regarding this, which is like, I mean, to be honest, you're just showing yourself. I think the tweet was deleted based off the nonsense, I'm assuming, but let's see. Did it get deleted? It might have got deleted because it was stupid. That's what it was. I mean, let me, somebody for sure screenshot it, but oh no, there it is. I think somebody screenshotted it. Um, but yeah, so which is very dumb, but <sighs> so basically, I mean, to briefly touch on the, uh, 
let me read the statement first from, you know, some dumb, dumb ass in terms of Twitter, of course, you know, which is of course the breeding ground of, uh, hatred and stupidity, but you know, to even try to make something of this, but basically in the, under the comments of said tweet, but, um, <laughs> Travis not being racist makes no fucking sense. Canonically. Yeah, let me actually, then we get more, more appropriate. <laughs> Travis not not being a racist makes no fucking sense canonically. Next game we get completely paused and Travis turns out to be bi or something. Why is that even in the game? <laughs> it's like what? And then I think somebody else somebody else said uh yeah, Travis <laughs> let me let me uh, I got to get accurate. <laughs> Travis literally killed billions, which includes his own sister too. But that's okay because he said racism bad. It's like, all right. Um, so I guess the logic is because he is a killer or an assassin, which is accurate specifically, that it doesn't make sense for him to not be racist, which is like, that that does not make sense. And it's like <laughs> clearly you're showing <laughs> excuse me, sir, your racism is showing a little bit. Just racism is showing a little bit. Just just let you know. But um so yeah. That's uh some of the dumb stuff that's apparently <laughs> just this off of one shirt. One shirt people people get get all in a fiddle. <laughs> Travis not being a racist, not being a racist makes no fucking sense canonically. It's like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> excuse me, sir. Um, your racism is showing. Excuse me. Um, either way, big ups to uh Suda fifty one. Um, and apparently this hoodie is uh I guess a famous. Not necessarily famous, but um, established brand, uh, at least specifically uh, Red Orca. So I'm guessing maybe there's some deal with Suda 51 and Red Orca where they were able to include this hoodie based off that or whatever, which is dope regardless. <laughs> what in the logic, man? <laughs> Travis, Travis not being a racist makes no fucking sense canonically. Because he killed his sister. <laughs> oh, the logic is just killing me, man. Oh, man. It's, it's, <laughs> it's killing me. Oh, uh, either way. Mad respect to Suter 51. Um, people like him. Just, just to bring some awareness, support. Because I mean, if we're being honest, it is stupid in general. But I totally agree. Fuck it. Fuck racism. Fuck racism. Okay. Um. On that note, that concludes news for this week. Uh, let's get into what I've been playing though. Um, if I can, uh, type, <laughs> if, <laughs> if I can type and I can breathe cause I <laughs> clearly, uh, clearly had a problem with that before. Um, yeah. So what I've been playing, let me, Got a sip. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't fuck up. I hate um. <laughs> I'm deliberately like <laughs> being careful how I swallow. Oh, uh, <coughs> so um, been playing uh Final Fantasy remake Intergrade. Uh, I replayed the, uh, Yuffie DLC on hard. Um, 
since I was I was just really feeling some Final Fantasy seven um, and it was good. It was great. Uh, some struggles here and there, but I figured it out and uh, succeeded one. Um, I know I had some struggles with the boss, the end game boss for the DLC <coughs> specifically, but, uh, we figured it out. We good. Uh, just, just a little ingenuity, some creativity and we managed to do it. And of course, man, just seeing the ending again, ah, definitely just part two can't come soon enough. It really can't. Um, yeah. Uh, but after that, uh, I was like, man, I'm pretty much platinumed FF seven again. So let me try, uh, you know, doing the last achievement and the last achievement of course is, um, beating, excuse me, beating the last, well, the new boss they added to the main game. Uh, in the combat simulator, <clears throat> which is Weiss. Um, <clears throat> if you played or are familiar with the uh, Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerberus, uh, you'll be you'll know who that character is. And I have to say, they are pretty accurate to his depiction from the uh, from the uh, Dirge of Cerberus, which is interesting. I was curious, considering the revelation you find out in Dirge of Cerberus about his character. Uh, what that entails in, in, in the future games, <clears throat> which I'm actually not sure again now because yeah, I, I don't want to spoil it, but it, it definitely, uh, raises a couple questions after you beat them, but who boy, let me, let me, <clears throat> uh, I guess somewhat more or less vent about, uh, the escapades with this care, this boss. Um, man, uh, so I think Weiss is definitely up there with those, uh, ridiculously hard skill check characters or skill check bosses. Very similar to what a Latrion, I think, <clears throat> you know, and what I mean by skill check specifically is <laughs> basically if you don't meet certain requirements within a certain time limit of, a, of the boss fight, you're basically, uh, pretty much dead. Um, I guess somewhat the origin of skill check, I would assume, or at least what I would uh, assume it is more or less the terminology of uh, skill check, but basically very strict, um, requirements in terms of beating the boss. So, you know, after beating the, the Yuffie DLC on hard, I was like, yeah, let me, let me give me, give me all this final fan. Any, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm actually just strange for final fantasy stuff. Cause I was just, I'm, I'm just been in a very final fantasy seven remake, uh, uh, mood. If anything, final fantasy seven, you know, I don't know what you would call it, but, <laughs> um, just a, uh, yeah just anything new with final fantasy seven. I'm like, let me, let me get it. I'm a, uh, mm, let me, let me eat it. But, uh, yeah. So specifically with Weiss, uh, man, probably spent what felt like at least initially fighting his ass was like three hours of just getting my ass whooped. Um, goodness, just get my ass whooped basically. Um, so, you know, I started looking up how to beat them, researching it. And, you know, I, I, I did notice a theme of some techniques to use to beat him. And, you know, basically, I think technically he has like three phases and there's basically a technique people are using to like basically reach a certain damage threshold, which in turn would uh, have him skip a certain phase and at least, you know, preferably kill him or down him in a, another phase, which is more, um, advantageous and in turn being able to, you know, win, succeed success. So with that in mind, I'm like, okay, cool. So I basically did the technique, which I think is not, I'm, I'm, 
I'll try not to spoil it as much as I can, but it's, you know, I mean, it's a boss fight. I, I don't think it's no necessarily story implications necessarily, but without spoiling anything, but, um, so pretty much he, he hits hard as hell. All his combos, like basically, <laughs> basically take you near death. Um, and then of course, what I mentioned earlier is the skill check where basically if you don't kill him within a certain time limit, he basically does this certain move. Uh, I believe it's called immaculate end. And <laughs> I think I joked about it, um, on Twitter. Basically it, when he, uh, he'll, um, he'll first start in, uh, initial phase where he has his two swords out, uh, it's pretty dope though. He has like swords that are guns, which I always loved. I always like fantasized as a kid, like a sword that actually is a gun, which I think is technically like squall from final fantasy nine. I want to say, but, or eight, I forgot which one I haven't. <laughs> I've only, I've still only played final fantasy seven as a, the only final fantasy game in the series I've played, which, you know, but yeah, uh, either way. Um, so he's in that phase. So starting out, um, and then there are certain periods where he is vulnerable, where you can exploit that. And you know, the, the goal is to build the stagger up and that's pretty much the key. <coughs> Cause in his current phase, it's like hard as hell to, it's hard as hell to, um, do any damage to his health. The key is to, basically build, getting his, getting him the stagger essentially, which, uh, basically I was able to do, um, and, you know, use the technique of using everybody else's magic. <coughs> but the issue I ran into is that, uh, his health, like, I guess the recommendation was to get his health at least a half, half when you stagger him the first time which I was having a hard time doing. I just wasn't able, wasn't doing enough damage, uh, for whatever reason. And pretty much that, that was the theme. Then after that, he'll like bring out this big ass gun and start shooting you and doing various other attacks. Like if he grabs you with it, it's like basically takes literally almost all your health and stuff like that. So then after that, um, if you don't, <laughs> <laughs> basically if you don't kill him after that or stagger him, I'm pretty sure just kill him, but he'll go, he'll then bring his swords back out. And then that's pretty much, <laughs> which is funny. Now that I'm thinking about it, basically after he brings his swords back out, <laughs> that's pretty much the moment where you just roll your eyes. Oh, fuck. <laughs> it's pretty much the indication where it's like, Oh yeah, I'm getting fucked up right now. I'm about to die. <laughs> Cause pretty much shortly after he does that, maybe like what 30 seconds at the most, he'll uh, do the immaculate end attack. And that basically is an attack that's like does nine, 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 nine damage to literally your whole party and pretty much game over. <laughs> so it got to the point where he's like, ah, well, I'm just going to turn quit. I'm just going to quit now. Cause <laughs> I'm dead. I know I'm dead. So there are technically some workarounds around that, at least from what I researched, basically the biggest one, at least I feel that's the most advantageous, um, was, a, a characteristic of your weapon, uh, for some of the weapons for the characters in the game, which is called reprieve, which is basically, uh, if you, it basically lets you with withstand, uh, uh insta kill attack pretty much. Basically he'll do the insta kill attack, but you'll still be alive with like one health, <laughs> which is like, Oh, all right. Um, and at least when doing that, um, <clears throat> it just, and that was a whole nother thing that I discovered, you know, troubleshooting, fighting with him essentially, or trying to figure out how to beat him, is that my weapons actually weren't maxed out. Even though I like literally, uh, sorry, literally played the whole game um, on, um, on hard as well. But what do you know? Uh, little did I find out, uh, there's the manuscripts in the game, uh, at least the ones on hard, um, actually give you the last remaining SP points that are needed to upgrade or max out your weapon in terms of getting these additional, 
uh, characteristics and um, properties, which of course, <laughs> pretty much the consistent missing factor for all of them is not having reprieve on them. And you know, that definitely considering after the experience of fighting with them, I realized it's like, oh, okay, that's definitely going to be essential considering how hard he is. But then I, I realized there's a lot of additional properties like additional extra damage, extra attack, uh, more health and stuff like that. So that eventually led me to like getting, getting all these damn um, manuscripts and the conditions to get some of these are just annoying. Um, specifically, I think chapter nine um, but basically the, the general requirement is to, uh, defeat a particular like boss, but it has to be on hard. Cause that's the only way you can get some of these, uh, manuscripts cause they're locked to the hard difficulty than any other difficulty. And then you freaking have to, uh, they're basically all, um, all the side quests I didn't do on my hard playthrough, which I assumed I didn't because I had everything I needed to. And then, you know, come to find out this bitch ass boss, uh, it's fucking hard as hell. So I had to get all these damn, um, additional manuscripts to basically upgrade my damn weapon to even stand a chance against this bitch. <laughs> Cause that's what he was. He was such a bitch. So did all that. Um, and then yeah, specifically chapter nine, which was annoying. And you know, my gripe, what I think I talked about initially when FF seven remake came out, but literally for chapter nine, you literally have to play it twice basically for, for these, uh, side quests, uh, to cause it's, uh, basically a conditional point where you have to favor one character over the other. And if you favor one character, you can do their side quest, but the other characters is locked and vice versa. So, uh, what that pretty much meant is that I pretty much had to start the chapter and right, right off the bat play. What was like an hour or two to even get up to, uh, the point where I can branch, uh, between those two, uh, sub quests and including that was the annoying ass boss hell house. So I had to, fucking beat hell house twice on hard to even, uh, to get these, these damn manuscripts to even to fight this fucking last end game booty, <laughs> booty ass. <laughs> I know that's redundant, but it's necessary for him. Cause he's a bitch, uh, freaking booty, uh, boss, uh, with, with a damn skill check that basically forces you to, to do all this crap. I guess technically if you're good enough, you could probably get away with it. But man, it is at least from what I tried this is very strict as hell. You just have to be super efficient with everything, which, uh, I don't know. I think I just was not able to do without like fully, uh, you know, reconfiguring everything, material and stuff and, and having a, refigure out the particular items needed to meet these certain conditions, which is just dumb. <sighs> Either way, I got all the damn manuscripts, upgraded my weapons and whooped his ass. I beat his ass. Uh, it felt so good though. It felt so good. And then you got a cool little, uh, you know, I guess, uh, exposition of, of his character and kind of what pretty much similar to, his character, uh, in, in Dirge of Cerberus in terms of the, I uh, kind of the big twist of the character itself, which I won't spoil, but <coughs> either way, uh, I just want to say that, um, um, Weiss, Weiss is a bitch. He's a, he's a big bitch. He's a dumb bitch with his dumb, dumb little, little, little hair looking like, look like a damn, Damn little Santa, Santa, but he trying to be edgy. Like how, who, who does his hair with the damn little, uh, the damn stars? What, like, what, who, who is your, who, who's your damn, who's your damn stylist? All right. Who's, who's, who's he go to? Will he go to the, he go to the Jersey shore after he, if he, if he does a GTL gym tan laundry or gym tan, um, get, <laughs> 
Let me stop. Let me stop. He pissed me off. I'm sorry. It felt good to beat his ass though, because he deserved it. Um, either way, I I prevailed. I succeeded. Weiss, more like <laughs> Weiss, more like nice. <laughs> I got him. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. I'm here all day. I'm not a dad though. I got these dad jokes in my pocket, but I'm not a dad though. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> That was my interesting escapade in Final Fantasy VII Integrate, but got all the uh, platinums, both the main game as well as Yuffie. I am, I am, uh, I am satisfied. Uh, Fort Condor, shouts out to Fort Condor by the way. That mini game is actually fun. I only dabbled on it, uh, dabbled in, dabbled with it for a little bit, but after I played it more did more of the hard stuff. It was pretty fun. So definitely hope that does come back in part two in some way. Um, it seems like it's, they're at least building some groundwork for that to at least be a mini game somewhere, at least, especially, you know, when we eventually visit Fort Condor itself in, uh, in part two, whenever we see that, <laughs> feel like I'm gonna have like a family and kids by that, uh, before that comes out, that's just gonna be, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, uh, yeah, so also, um, played, uh, no more heroes to, um, desperate Desperate struggle struggle. on, uh, the, uh, PC via steam. Um, boy, I, I think this is one of the first times I literally made a review on steam uh, because of my love and care for the games, but man, uh, one is a little bit better, but who two is like just, just atrocious, uh, an atrocious port so far. Uh, hopefully they patch it. Um, but at least what I encountered, I had the same issues with the first game with the audio clipping and, um, uh, the weird camera, the Y axis camera, which is, was weird. Um, but addition, in addition to those, um, this game literally crashed on me like three times. And of and each crash was specifically, each crash was specifically after it was specifically after, uh, beating a boss. It's like basically after you beat a boss, you get to this, uh, victory screen, of you beating the boss and for whatever reason, it literally kept specifically crashing there. And then, uh, because you can only save before the start of a, of a boss fight and you save right after that victory screen, which of course crashes. So (laughs) fuck you too. Then I guess, you know, so, uh, yeah, you're basically fucked. So, so literally you basically, I had to fight these bosses twice. Which I mean, I mean, I, I played it. I know the game like the back of my hand at this point, but I mean, still, it's annoying either way. Um, you know, having to do a boss fight all over again after you succeeded is uh, pretty frustrating. But <laughs> because I love the game so much, I like was willing to push through that. But hey, I definitely voiced my issue with it because I care. Okay, because I ca- <laughs> because I care. Um, yeah, so whew, horrible. And then another big issue is that like literally your save, your settings do not save for whatever reason you could change, like specifically, uh, again with the camera issues is that like, because the default cameras aren't in my definition, um, normal, they seem to be inverted or, you know, I think Japan has their interpretation of inverted versus not inverted. I know I encountered that with Yakuza. I think I mentioned that before, but either way, the fact that I can't save the settings is really annoying. Cause then after you boot the game back, you, you know, get a brief moment of like (laughs) discombobulation where you're just like, Oh, what? This isn't right. And then, you know, throws you off and you have to pause again and then change the settings, which is (sighs) just annoying. This is not the ideal way to play this game which I, you know, described in the interview. So, I mean, a review 
And um, yeah, so definitely uh, if you have access to a Nintendo Switch and you want to play No More Heroes, I definitely recommend that version over the PC version in its current state. Um, hopefully they patch it because otherwise, yeah, I, I do not recommend it based on its current grounds. Um, so yeah, hopefully it seems like this, this seems like that, uh, we'll eventually get a console port of these games on, you know, PS five and series X, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, disappointing either way though. I, I did beat it, but still disappointing that, you know, uh, I, I would hate somebody um, who has experienced this game in series for the first time to experience this experience it this way, because it's not accurate of, you know, the games themselves, at least previously, of course, obviously for the, the Nintendo Wii and, <clears throat> and even the Nintendo switch. So, um, yeah, uh, played a little bit of Valorant, uh, played, um, with a couple people in terms of the, um, I think it was a limited time event, a snowball fight. I've never played. I've always just known Valorant to just be straight Valorant <laughs> and not any of these fun modes or additional modes, uh, which was pretty fun. It was some, some moments I'm like, that's bullshit where I'm like literally aiming at people and it just missed. But I think I forgot. I believe Valorant has a lot of that, uh, counter strike aiming where it's like, <laughs> technically there's a technique to it, but it's very hard to, I guess, um, you know, get used to it and kind of do it on reflex, which, uh, felt kind of like that, but at least the mode had some modifiers that you can uh, like give you a power up, give you somewhat of an advantage, like a uh, faster move speed, like skates where you're literally being able to skate and jump around the map. Um, the rapid fire where you can, you know, fire the snowballs faster. Uh, I think it's one that makes the snowball lot larger and in turn the hitbox larger for people. So it had a lot of stuff going for it either way. So, uh, <laughs> one of these days I'll actually <laughs> play the main game at some point, but it was fun either way. Uh, super smash brothers ultimate. Of course, uh, Kazuya Mishima came out. Uh, played with some of my roommates as well as uh, played uh, some online stuff. Uh, Kazuya Mishima, I think, is uh, my 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 new main in Smash. I have to say that off the bat because he is fun as hell to play. Uh, of course, me being a huge fan of Tekken, uh, definitely I'd say I'd cons I'd consider Tekken my favorite fighting game series um yeah of all time i'd say if i had to pick one uh, i love i just feel like i i gel with tekken more than any other fighter um when it comes to just the accessibility and um just the rules of the game i feel like i could just grasp easier than uh, other fighting games but um yeah so with all that in mind um I think they did a pretty damn good job of translating the feel of Kazuya into, you know, the even more limited smash rules, uh, move sets, which is pretty, again, props to Sakurai for even, you know, pulling stuff like this off, ah, being able to bring so many characters from, from so many diverse backgrounds into one single game is, I think that's just 80 people, mind you is, is, uh, is, is still a pretty crazy feat, man. I, it's, we are never going to get this again. I would be surprised if we ever get anything close to this, but so I'd say enjoy this while it lasts because whew, it seems like, well, the time may be limited. Um, at least specifically, you know, the, the, the fervor and the fun of the smash and new characters and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man, Kazuya is fun as hell. He, he just has so, so many things at his disposal, uh, <laughs> and possibilities. <laughs> it's funny. I seen online, like, shoot, even, even, uh, the, the CPUs are ridiculously OP. <laughs> I was seeing online, like, uh, some players fighting 
some like pros, straight up pros fighting uh these uh CPUs at uh level nine and just doing ridiculous shit. <laughs> this is killing me. Just the most ridiculous shit no one ever seen of. And then like I think it now rolled into a meme where now <laughs> Kazuya, the level nine CPU is like <laughs> <laughs> I'm a free agent now. <laughs> I am no longer a CPU. I am man. <laughs> literally, he literally becomes sentient. And um, <laughs> that'd be funny. Somebody needs to run with that. Somebody, I would I would watch that. Somebody needs to run with that joke. I, re- I would really appreciate it. Um, Yeah, he's, he's very fun, very powerful. Um, I mean... I'm not sure when it comes to the meta, I think, um, at least from what I heard, I know a lot of smash fans are not pleased with him in terms of, uh, well, I mean the whole Shoto discussion thing, which is just a whole, just whole bag of worms. I don't necessarily want to get into basically, uh, Kazuya is not a Shoto, uh, Ryu Ken are Shotos as in a character that has a dragon punch and a Tatsu. And, you know, in terms of those move sets and being in a gi and all that, that's what I consider a Shoto. Kazuya is not a Shoto. I'm, that's all I'm going to say about that matter. But uh, outside of that, um, yeah, man, he uh, he he's definitely the best I can. Uh, so I can recall that I consistently can perform well with. I'm not sure if maybe that's just just my general uh, Tekken like background and experience with Tekken and just that being able to translate well for me or what, but just even online too, it's just, I've been having a, he's just pretty powerful. Um, I don't know if he's like OP though. I don't think he's necessarily OP. It's like, if you're quick, if you're a fast character, I think he has an advantage over you. Um, uh, I mean, if they have an advantage over Kazuya, but, um, outside of that, I don't know. I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to get, get the, uh, get his, uh, electric, uh, electric punches down. And they, it's funny how, like, even if you translate it to smash and a more simpler control set, they still maintain it to make it as pretty much difficult as it is in Tekken. Uh, I mean, there's a technique I tried that was circulating online that uh, didn't necessarily work for me for the switch pro controller. Maybe I'll try with the GameCube controller, but I don't know. I just don't know. I just don't, but either way, I totally approve of Kazuya. Uh, it makes total sense. Of course he's, you know, they had to, they had to get some tech and representation in there, especially of course the, the company developing this smash game and of the previous, uh, iterations of smash recently, uh, being Bandai Namco makes total sense for them to be included in the, in the fray. Uh, cause Kazuya enters the next battle. That's pretty cool too. His windscreen actually literally has the Tekken Tekken announcer (laughs) Kazuya win. (laughs) Uh, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. I am loving Kazuya. I think he's definitely my main, uh, my my main for the foreseeable future. Unless this uh, next character. I mean, if this next character is uh, probably this next character is because um, um, what's his name? How can I forget him? He's so iconic. If the next character is Kiryu Kazama, I mean. <sighs> That probably would be the, uh, all right, I pro- I got a new main. I wouldn't even care if he suck. I'm just going to play him because I love him so much. But, um, yeah. Yeah. He's good. He's great. He's great. I can't, <laughs> I can't. And he has so much, so much combo potential. He can like combo off a lot of, a lot of things. It looks like, uh, he just has a lot of, he just, he definitely, gels with my play style, I think, um, in terms of having easier combos rather than like what feels like very abstract combos that like are very conditional in terms of like the person's HP and stuff like that, that it's hard to keep track of and remember without like repetition 
and you know a lot of playtime more or less that uh I'm not necessarily willing to uh you know invest in but I totally approve of Kazuya Mishima and you should too <laughs> I approve this message um and of course now that I got all the now that I got the Final Fantasy 7 out of my system for the most part uh, went back to Mass Effect a little bit. Only played a little bit so far. Pretty much my this past week consists of me fucking getting strong enough to beat Weiss's ass in Final Fantasy VII, which I did now, so I can move on freely. But um, yeah, um, at least played a little bit of Mass Effect Three. <sighs> the unfortunate end of a of a great trilogy. Um, you know, saying whatever you will about the, uh, the ending, which I'm, 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 I'm actually very, uh, curious to kind of revisit the ending and see how it's gonna, how I feel about it now after, you know, what, tw- uh, what nine, nine years since we, uh, we got, we got a uh, three and, you know, see how I feel now <clears throat> playing all the DLC and stuff. See if, um, yeah, how, how, how I feel about it now, you know, I've as some time passed and, you know, conditions changed in terms of experience with their certain other games and stuff like that. So yeah, outside of that, that's pretty much all I've been playing. Um, getting what I've been watching, which has only, well, has mainly been, uh, Loki, Loki, Loki boy. This last episode, man, pretty damn good. Um, I'm gonna try to be as cryptic as I can. Uh, yeah. Well, how can I dance around? I, I, I it, it's, uh, it, it's encouraging. Um, mm, in terms of things that happened in the last episode, um, we found out some answers to uh, some very burning questions and uh, now have more questions. <laughs> uh, ooh, especially the ending after credit scene. Whew. So we, we'll see. You got some explaining to do. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I am very just, I'm just, I'm curious at this point, what is going to happen? Um, yeah, it was good. It was pretty good. Uh, it was a lot of, a lot of, uh, curtains being revealed. Some of our speculations in terms of certain people who we thought they weren't, they, they, that, uh, who we thought they were, were not. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I can, yeah, it's no way I can't spoil it. So I won't, um, at least after the, uh, after the season's over, I think that's when I'll, uh, spoil it up. But, um, yeah, very good episode. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, it was a, <laughs> it was a great moment where Loki, uh, I forgot her name, Freya, where she's, <laughs> he's in this time loop with her. <laughs> he keep getting his ass beat. Uh, that's that, that was some good television, man. Some good television. Oh man. So good. So good. Marvel is how Marvel cannot miss so far. Jesus. They can't. I, I, I'm waiting to see it. <laughs> I'm waiting to see it. Um, of course, a little bit of that family guy. I'm still, I'm slowly treading. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's, it's, it's basically a comfort show at this point. Um, but yeah, not pretty much outside of that. That's been pretty much it. Um, yeah. So with all that said, um, I believe that will conclude episode 111 switches sites. Um, if you did like the show, uh, feel free to like, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's greatly appreciated. 
Um, if you want to catch this live and watch me <laughs> choke live on uh, on Twitch, uh, you can do so at uh, Twitch TV slash Ace Witch. Of course, you can also see the archive of me choking my ass <laughs> live because um, I'm, I'm fucking I'm leaving it. I don't care. Uh, on uh, YouTube.com slash Ace Witch as well. With all that being said, uh, till next time, get your game on. Oh yeah. Nobody's safe.